we're going to look for equations of tangent lines starting with this first example. So I've got the line tangent to f of x equals x squared at x equals 3. So what I'm looking for, if I go ahead and draw in x squared, kind of sort of, at 3, 1, 2, 3, I can find a line that just perfectly touches that curve. I'm going to show this to you on a graph as soon as I'm finished with all of the math. I'm going to do this in a three-step process. This is a great way to proceed with these. The very first step is to find your point. And the point that we're looking for is the point in our point slope equation there. This is our goal, the equation. So I'm looking for the point x1 comma y1. Well to find that point, I know that my point is going to be at x equals 3. So this is equal to 3 comma. I just need to find the y coordinate that goes along with it and that's going to be this point right there. So it's going to be 3 comma f of 3. Just writing it out so it applies to whatever you happen to be working on. This is going to be 3 comma 3 squared because my formula says my function says to square that 3 and I've got the point 3 comma 9. So I've got my point done. Step number two is to find that slope and I'm going to use my derivative to find the slope. So as I'm looking for the slope I know that the slope is equal to the derivative of my function at whatever my point value happens to be. So for this one, I need to go ahead and find my derivative first. So f prime of x is equal to x squared's derivative, and that's going to be equal to 2x. This gives me the slope at any point, but I want the derivative at my x value of 3. So let's go ahead and put 3 in. This is going to be 2 times 3 three or six. So six is equal to m. So, so far I've got the point and I've got the slope, which means that I am ready to apply my point slope formula and find the equation of this line. Let me give myself a little bit more room here. Step number three. So step number three, I want to find the equation of that line. Let me go ahead and write the point slope formula here again. Y minus Y1 is equal to M X minus X1. Now I lost my point. Let me just bring that guy back into view. There we go. And I can start to plug some things in. My point is 3 comma 9. This is going to be my x1 and my y1. So x1 comma y1. So I can plug those in. 9 is y1. 3 is x1. The other piece I've got to plug in is my slope and that is equal to 6. Putting all of this together, I get y minus my y coordinate of 9 is equal to 6 x minus the x coordinate at the point of tangency, which is 3. Let's go ahead and just do the math here. So y minus 9, bring that 6 through and we get 6x minus 18. I need to add that 9 to both sides. When I add that 9 to both sides, I get the equation of my tangent line in slope intercept form. y is equal to 6x minus 9. Now you don't have to hope for the best with the equations of tangent lines. You can check every single example by graphing them. I'm going to graph both the equation and the original function, and my original function was x squared. I've got Desmos open. I'm also going to show you how to do this with your graphing calculator. So if I go over into Desmos, now I'm going to put in both my original function and the equation of the tangent line. If I do a little bit of panning and zooming, I can see that I've got a really nice line of tangency there at my tangent point 3 comma 9. So I've got a really great answer here. I can also do this in the calculator, going to y equals. From here, I'm going to go immediately to zoom and make sure that I've got a zoom standard because I know that that point of tangency is between 10 and 10. If I go ahead and hit enter, um, here comes my first curve and then my tangent line. And again, I can check to see that it is tangent. Let's do another example. 
For this next one, I'm again looking for the equation of my tangent line, and this time I've got cosine of 2x as my function, and it's going to be tangent at pi eighths. Now you could start by graphing this. I'm not going to. I'm going to dive right into my steps. Step number one, I want to find my point x1, comma y1. So we're going to go ahead and start there. My x is pi eighths, and I need to find my function evaluated at pi eighths. So this is going to be cosine of 2 times pi eighths. 2 times pi eighths, I can actually rewrite this guy as pi fourths. So I'm just going to skip a little step there that's going to be of pi fourths, and I end up with pi eighths, comma, cosine of pi fourths, which is radical 2 over 2, or you could write that as 1 over radical 2. Okay, so I've got my point. Step number two, next we need to find the slope, and we know that the slope is equal to the derivative, but I first need to take the derivative in general, so the derivative at x. So that's going to be the derivative of cosine of 2x. Now this is going to need a chain rule. If you are not familiar with the chain rule, take a look at the video that I've got linked down below. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and dive in. I've got my outer function, and I've got my inner function. So as I take this derivative, I start with the derivative of my outer function. Let's bring a little more room here. So the derivative of that outer function is going to be, let's see, negative sine. So this is equal to negative sine and I leave the inside fixed. So with respect to that 2x, so I leave the inside fixed, and now I'm going to multiply on the derivative of my inner function. The derivative of 2x is 2. I can clean this up just a tiny bit, and I can write this as negative sine. Let's put the 2 out in front, so negative 2 sine of 2 x. So I've got my slope in general, but I really want the slope at the point of tangency. So the slope that we're looking for is f prime evaluated at pi eighths. So I need to go ahead and throw pi eighths into my slope function. So this is going to be 2 times pi eighths. This simplifies really similar to how my other one did. It's going to leave me with a pi fourths on the inside. So if I work this one through, I end up with negative 2 times the sine of pi fourths, which is radical 2 over 2. I can cancel these 2s, and my slope is equal to negative radical 2. So I've got my point right here is my x1 and my y1, and I've got my slope, so I am ready for my point slope form. Uh, let's move this up just a little bit, and we're ready for step number three. So number three, point slope is y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. Let's plug everything in that we've got. So y minus up to my point here, y1 is radical 2 over 2. So radical 2 over 2 is equal to m, m is negative radical 2, negative radical 2, and then I've got x, x is my variable, so I leave that guy, minus x1, x1, again back up to my point here, that's going to be my pi eighths, so pi eighths. We are just about there, I need just to do some simplifying, and then I will have it. So we get, uh, let's put the y on one side. I'm going to add that 2 radical or radical 2 over 2 to both sides. Let's also distribute this negative radical 2. So I get negative radical 2 times x. Distributing here, I get plus pi radical 2 over 8. So my distribution is done. And I'm going to add the radical 2 over 2, so plus radical 2 over 2. This is one form of my tangent line equation, but I could also get a common denominator here and multiply this by 4 over 4. So if I write this now in all of its glory, it's going to be negative radical 2x plus, I have a common denominator now, so I can write both of these in a numerator, pi radical 2 plus 4 radical 2 
all divided by eight, and we've got the equation of our tangent line. Again, you can type this and your original function into either Desmos or your calculator to make sure that this is in fact your tangent line. I've got one more for you. In this last example, we're looking for the line of tangent C to y equals one over x at x equals negative two. Let's go ahead and dive into our very first step, and that's to find our point x1 comma y1. We are plugging our point of tangency or the x coordinate of tangency into the original function. So we end up with negative two comma y equals one over x, so one over negative two, and we can rewrite that really simply simply as negative two comma negative one half. So I've got that point of tangency. So there is my x1 and my y1. Next up is the slope. So step number two, we're gonna find that slope and the slope is equal to the derivative at my x value, which is negative two. I need to start by finding the derivative in general first. So I'm gonna start with the derivative of x, which is the derivative of one over x. Now I need to use a power rule here, so I'm gonna rewrite that as x to the negative one prime. Using a power rule, I get negative one x to the minus one minus one, which is gonna be minus two, and I can rewrite this one. The negative two puts the x in my denominator as negative one over x squared. So if I put in x equals negative two here, I'm gonna end up with negative one over negative two squared, which is equal to negative one over four, and I've got my slope. So I've got my points, I've got my slope, I am ready for my point slope form and the equation of my line. Let me go ahead and move all of this up out of the way and let's find the equation step number three. So number three, I'm gonna use my point slope form. Y minus Y1 is equal to M X minus X1. Let's plug everything in. Y minus Y1 is negative one half. So that's gonna be minus negative one half. I'll change that to a positive here in just a second. Is equal to M and M is negative one fourth. So negative one fourth and then parenthesis X minus my X value, which is negative two. So another negative here. So cleaning things up, I don't need all those negatives. I have Y plus one half is equal to uh, negative one fourth X plus two. We are just about there. Let me just move this up a little bit and we will get to that answer. I'm gonna subtract the one half from both sides. We're also going to distribute that negative one fourth into the parentheses. So we're gonna end up with Y is equal to negative one fourth times the X negative one fourth times two, so negative two over four, and then I'm subtracting the one half from both sides as well, so minus one half. Now if I reduce this two fourths, this becomes a minus one half, and I can combine this all together. I get a really nice looking equation of the tangent line, negative one fourth x, minus one half minus one half, which is equal to minus one. And I've got the equation of the tangent line. Now I've got so many more videos on calc. So take a look at the next video here. It's really gonna help you with your course. Thank you so much for watching.